Welcome to the Organic Chemistry Podcast, Dr. Brian Lloyd's Scribblecast of Organic Chemistry Lectures and Solutions to Homework Problems. In this homework problem, we look at a question which seems to give students a lot of trouble, and that is when you're asked to draw a 3D structure for a molecule that has more than one chiral center. So what we want to do is take a stepwise approach and look at how you could draw a three-dimensional structure for the molecule ethyl, space, 2R3S, 3-amino, 2-iodyl, 3-phenylpropanoate. Now, the first thing you always do when you're asked to draw a structure in which you're given chirality is to first just draw the structure ignoring chirality and then look for the chiral centers. Now, a propanoate is a three-carbon chain. Okay, and uh, let's space it out a little bit. How about that? There we go. So a propanoate is an ester, so it's a double bond O. And off of the oxygen is the ethyl group, the CH2, CH3. Now, off of carbon 2, we have an iodo. Off of carbon three, we have an amino. And it looks like there is also a phenyl. So I'm gonna move this over a little bit. Don't need it quite so far away. Now give me more room for the three phenyl. So there's the NH2 for the amino and now the phenyl. And now I can put in my H's. And I can now begin to look for chiral carbons. And when I do that, I can see the carbon on the CH3 has three hydrogens, so it's not chiral. The CH2 has two hydrogens, so it's not chiral. The ester carbon only has three groups around it, it's not chiral. Same goes for all the aromatic carbons on the benzene ring, the phenyl group. The carbon with the iodine has an H, is attached to ester in this big group, so it is chiral. It has four different groups. And the carbon attached to the phenyl and the NH2 has four different groups, so it's chiral. So when I draw my first Fischer projection, I'm going to draw it so that the intersection points show those two chiral centers. Now, you were asked to draw the longest carbon chain vertical. When I asked you to do this, I said make sure you put the phenyl to the bottom. The highest priority group is, of the chain is to be at the top. Well, that's clearly the ester. And so we can write our structure with the longest carbon chain vertical. That's a CO2. CH2, CH3. I'm going to write the CH2, CH3 as C2H5. And then to the bottom we have our aromatic ring. And then we have an H and an NH2, and I just draw it any old way. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to draw H and H2. And why not stagger the groups? Put I, H here, just for the fun of it. And the whole process now involves in finding out what stereochemistry I've drawn and ask if I've drawn the fissure correctly. Now the way you do that is to actually take a close look at the chiral centers individually. So I'm going to make some more space and redraw this, if I can, make it a little larger. I'm going to draw CO2 C2H5, draw my chiral centers here, and then at the bottom I've got my aromatic ring, and 
And so I believe I had it drawn H and H2 and I H. Now what I'm going to do is look at each chiral center separately. So I'm going to draw only one chiral center. And just to make it a little easier, I'm going to just CO2R here, where R is my ethyl group. Now I've got an I, an H. And I'm going to use a squiggle to represent everything else. Okay. Now I can prioritize. Prioritizing by atomic number, I gets number one. And then I have carbons. The chiral carbon on the squiggle is attached to a nitrogen. The carbon with the ester is attached to oxygen. Oxygen's higher atomic number, it's two. This makes the squiggle number three. And hydrogen's four. If I want to know the chirality of what I have drawn, I have to move number four to the bottom. And if I do that, then I can draw a curve and figure out what I've got. So I leave my CO2R where it is, leave my I where it is, but I switch the H with the squiggle. So I have one for the iodine, two for the ester, and three for the squiggle. H is four. Now, ignoring number four, I draw a curve from one to two to three. If that curve is clockwise, it's R. Well, indeed, it's clockwise, it's R. And so the original must be S because I did one interchange and an odd number of interchanges is the enantiomer. Enantiomer to R is S. So this guy is S. Now I can check out the bottom chiral center. If I look at it, I've got a phenyl. I have an H an H2, and then I'll symbolize the upper chain with its squiggle. Okay, now I can prioritize. Who's highest atomic number? Well, the squiggle has a carbon attached to the chiral center. Benzene has a carbon. Nitrogen, nitrogen's higher atomic number than carbon, so he gets one. Now the carbon, that was the chiral center, or the squiggle, has an iodine off of it. If I proceed out the chain of the benzene, it just has a carbon. So the squiggle gets number two. The benzene ring becomes number three, and hydrogen's four. As in the previous case, I must switch, do one interchange, get number four to the bottom. If I do that, I'll put Oh, let's, let's make some room, draw it. So I'll have to put the benzene to the left where the H was. If I do that, I get this. The NH2 still to the right. And my squiggle is still up. Okay, so the NH2 is number one, the squiggle is number two. The benzene ring's number three, and the H is number four. Ignoring number four, draw a curve, one to two to three. One to two to three in this case is counterclockwise, which means it's S. That means because I did one interchange, the original, therefore, was R. Odd number of interchanges is the enantiomer. R is this. Now, if I look back at the name, you will notice it was 2R3S, counting from the ester. It looks like I've got 2S3R. I've got both chiral centers backwards. What does that mean? Well, that means I only have to switch them around. I will write in red what I wanted. What I wanted here was R for this chiral center and S for that. That would be 2R3S. 
but I've got them perfectly backwards. Since I want that, I know I can change to the red by doing one switch. Of course, when I do the switch, I want to keep the longest carbon chain vertical. So I'm going to just switch the H and the I. That will change that chiral center. And then I would switch the H and the N and H2 to switch that one to S. If one was correct, or both were correct, I wouldn't be doing this switch. So I'm doing this switch just to bring things in line, if you like. So here we go. I'm going to draw the same fissure, basically. I've got my CO2, C2H5. I'm going to switch the H and the I, which therefore will make this chiral center now R. And I will switch the NH2, so I'll call it H2N. And I will switch the H, which will make that one S. That's exactly what we wanted. And then I will draw my benzene thusly. So I'm ready now to produce the 3D. And remember the question said draw the 3D structure. In the 3D, the horizontal lines are coming out at you as wedges. So I can draw those wedges. And I can fill them in nicely. Fill in the wedges. Next, I can put in some dashes for the vertical lines. And you'll notice it's the end of the vertical lines that go away. Now I can write my ester group, CO2, C2H5. I can put my I here. I can put my H here. I can write my H2N left H and at the bottom try to draw an aromatic ring and I'll just put a circle in it and so this right here oops try to just make some room here this is my 3d structure That's my 3D structure. And that's how you do this. So the first step was just to draw the molecule ignoring the R and S. Then I proceeded to draw a fissure with the longest carbon chain in the proper orientation and just randomly put the groups around it. I checked the chirality of the two groups. Once I got that, I compared that to what I needed. If I needed something different, I switched the groups at that chiral center. If they were right, I would have just left it and gone. Don't forget, many students just stop at the fissure. Do not forget to draw the three-dimensional diagram. Well, that's it. The end of another Homework Scribblecast podcast. I'm Dr. Brian Lloyd. This is my Scribblecast. Thank you very much.